But I want to take a few minutes to outline my thoughts on the year behind us and our outlook on the road ahead of us. We find the external environment to be one where concerns related to currency, energy, and other areas, as well as technological disruptions, have created volatility. However, I believe that these are not structural issues, and that despite these, a company that is focused on innovation and on efficiency can achieve great results. I believe that the traditional model of IT services is dying, but yet businesses continue to look for partners who can help them grow and innovate, who can help them renew their operations and their business, and do so in reliable and agile ways. Over the last took over as CEO, our, some of our weaknesses as a company, especially in sales and other processes, and in the delivery culture driven by proactive innovation, have become starkly clear to me. However, I have also found that we have key strengths that more than outweigh these challenges. We have an immense ability to educate and to learn, perhaps the best in the world. We have a deep organizational desire to change and improve. And we have a great ability to recruit the best talent and to bring the talent into teams that are deeply client-centric and passionate about their work. It is these trends that give me the confidence in our strategy, despite the weaknesses, to turn all of our aspirations into commitments. It is clear that in our operations, especially in sales, we need to execute better, both in improving our existing operations and in bringing new solutions to the market. Our recent organizational realignment has freed up senior management leaders to focus exclusively on client relationships and business development. We will continue to make additional changes to further strengthen our ability to execute and deliver on our aspiration as needed. And our aspiration is clear, industry leading profitable growth by financial year 2017. We have launched some specific initiatives to execute against our renew and new strategy in sales, in consulting and delivery, and in IP creation. We are rethinking all of our client-facing functions. We are doing this by streamlining our sales function, by unifying delivery, and by bringing design thinking as a deep competency within all of our client engagement functions, as well as redesigning our RFP and oral processes. We are establishing systematic innovation as an imperative in every single project that we deliver. We are doing this by putting together what is possibly the largest ever training program in design thinking. Since its launch in October 2014, about 25,000 employees have been trained in design thinking through an immersive one-day-long training session. We have launched a new notion of a zero distance to innovation project where every project map is given a specific five point innovation agenda. Every project that we do, tens of thousands of projects will follow this approach and more than 1,700 of our projects have already been following this for the last six weeks. We are bringing in next generation technology architectures and upgrading the internal development infrastructure to include competency in open source, big data, cloud infrastructures, mobility, etc. We are accelerating our product with Finical and Edge and our platform with IIP, the Infosys automation platform IAP, and our Panaya business. We established a new leadership structure for the products and platform businesses, and we are building expertise and credibility in open source software, including contributing back code back to the community. We have more than 30 new training courses across these various projects, and we are now training more than 2,500 employees per month in open source technology. As a result of this focus, Finical saw 14.2% growth quarter over quarter in constant currency, and Edge also saw significant growth. Pinnacle sustained its business momentum with 23 wins and 11 go lives this quarter, including a standard bank in South Africa and Qantas Credit Union in Australia, among others. On edge, we had 12 wins and three clients within the quarter. In the short duration of less than two quarters, 
we have more than 100 projects with clients going about using IIP. 15 of these pilots have already been completed, where each pilot is an extremely agile one, taking three to five weeks to close. Four of these are already in full production, and 17 contracts are in the final stages of being executed. Our Infosys automation platform for infrastructure management has been deployed in nine projects and has a pipeline of 31 projects already. We're able to show nearly 40% productivity improvement in our deployment using IAP. Infosys also has a strong AI practice, which has seen a spike in the number of projects over the last nine months, especially in engineering and finance, where we have proven success in providing solutions to complex and diverse problems using real next-generation artificial intelligence technologies like machine learning, neural networks, and probabilistic networks. We are especially proud of our relationship with Boeing, where we have been working on knowledge-based engineering to develop software tools with the objective of reducing the flow time in the aircraft development process using artificial intelligence. I believe that we can bring this notion to many enterprise landscapes. Syngenta, a world leader in agribusiness, had application performance challenges in their management reporting due to large volume of data. We at Infosys did a project with IIP to improve this performance by 12 to 60 times. At Syngenta, again, the Infosys automation platform is automating the SAP user authorization request and improving the user productivity through speedy close of authorization requests. In addition, Syngenta went live with the Trade Edge dealer management system in last quarter to manage distributors in two states in India. This will be rolled out to, distribu to distributors across other states and other countries in Asia over the course of next year. And with Panaya, which we acquired during Q4, we are seeing up to 50% productivity improvement in testing. At ABB in Brazil, we saved 30% on testing time. At Inchcape, we saved 50% in testing integration and documentation efforts. At CBC, the Coca-Cola Israel, we completed their six-month project in just two and a half months. And at Royal Resorts, we saved them 73% effort in SAP development. We are transforming Infosys Consulting to be the tip of our spear. We have consolidated our various consulting units under a single global leadership. And in the last few months, we have completed more than 20 client engagements in design thinking, and we have a pipeline of 100 more. One outstanding success with design thinking has been the transformation of our relationship with RWE, one of the largest utility companies in Europe. Peter Therium, the CEO of RWE, has said this, and I quote, our company, and in fact our entire industry, is in the midst of a massive transformation. Given the scale of the market disruption, RWA has started our innovation journey more than two years ago. In this change journey, our interactions with Infosys on design thinking have already yielded great value by increasing the scope of what we even thought as possible. I look forward to an increasingly strategic and collaborative partnership between our companies using design thinking in Silicon Valley and around the globe." End quote. We are improving employee engagement and participation, and we have established a SWAT team to simplify our processes, to empower people, and to eliminate bureaucracy. We have already simplified immigration, travel, and device policies for employees. We announced 100% bonus payouts in Q2 and Q3, which I believe has helped us to retain good talent. Due to this and other employee engagement measures, to deeply involve our employees in our innovation and our journey. I'm very happy to report that our employee attrition has been contained. We had 1,768 employee exits in January, 1,437 in February, and 1,352 in March. This can be compared to 2,850 exits in May of 2004 and 2,528 in July, just prior to my joining. We are opening new frontiers to our business with a unique approach to investment, M&A, startups, and with our $500 million investment fund. And we are reaffirming that everyday learning 
and lifelong learning is the way of life at Infosys, and we are doing so by launching a next-generation learning platform, updating our curriculum in our training program, sponsoring an executive MBA for our top talent with the Stanford Graduate School of Business, and by collaborating with leading universities around the world in areas like artificial intelligence and database and data sciences. As a result of all of these initiatives and others, I believe also that client confidence in Infosys has increased. Their concerns about leadership transition, stability, and the perceived lack of agility and positioning for the future have largely abated. I have personally met one-on-one -on -one with more than 170 top client executives and more than 500 clients, and I sense their excitement to be associated and engaged with Infosys. Some examples from last quarter, House of Fraser selected Infosys to deliver a strategic transformation of retail programs, bringing advanced technology to their multi-channel business. House of Fraser is a famous UK retailer, which is now a part of the Sand Power Group in China. ABN AMRO selected Infosys as one of its strategic partners to drive its business transformation. Infosys will deliver services across the application development and maintenance, as well as testing and product implementation lifecycle for ABN AMRO. Western Union Financial Services selected us for an 11-year turnkey project where we take end-to-end -end ownership to modernize, maintain, and support their worldwide settlement systems. And a leading global express delivery company selected us to simplify and transform their entire technology application landscape. Today we are also announcing two strategic investments. We have taken an investment, a stake, in an exciting startup called AirWiz in the Internet of Things area, and we have entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Scava, whose mobile commerce tooling platform is used by leading retailers around the world. I would now like to talk briefly about our performance in the quarter that ended in, on the 31st of March, the lessons that we have learned, and the We closed the last quarter of fiscal 2015 at $2.159 billion dollars revenue in reported currency and 2208 million so 2.208 billion in constant currency so naturally i am disappointed that we could not do better compared to the guidance that we had provided for the year despite a promising first three quarters but i am pleased of course that our cost structures have stabilized and we are able to balance investments and profitability while returning higher dividends to investors as we are doing today and rajiv will talk about this and our bonus issue in more detail. Thanks to our operational efficiency initiative, the operating margin of the company has significantly improved from 23.5% in Q1 of fiscal 2014 to 25.7% in Q4 fiscal 2015. We will continue our focus on improving utilization, on eliminating waste, reducing on-site employee cost as a percentage of the revenue, and bringing more agility into our business enabling functions. This is vital to generating the cash flows that are required to invest into our renew and new strategy. This positive momentum, coupled with the corrective measures that I have outlined, will help us recover the loss of momentum that we saw in Q4 2015. Our year-on-year -year guidance for financial year 16 is to grow in the range of 10 to 12 percent at constant currency. I expect that we will grow at a minimum of 10% in constant currency. The mission of our plan is to prepare our company to achieve an aspirational goal of $20 billion in revenue by 2020 at at least 30% in operating margin. We wish to see new services like design thinking, AI, and the intellectual property-led businesses to contribute at least 10% of our revenue by then. We expect our inorganic investment to influence approximately 1.5 billion in new revenue by then. We will increase the revenue per employee to $80,000 by deploying automation and innovation in existing businesses. We expect to generate at least 30% productivity improvement in existing service lines from these solutions. And new platforms in our edge portfolio work, they work on different revenue models and will contribute disproportionately to our revenue per person. Our goal is also to bring attrition levels down to the lowest in the industry and to achieve at least 25% in diversity in our top leadership. Our aspiration is to make Infosys a great place to work 
and attract the best talent in the industry across the globe. I am confident that the steps that we are taking will get us there. Will get us back to being the bellwether of our industry, to being a next generation services company, one that delivers innovation for a world that is fundamentally being reshaped by software. Let me now hand over to Rajiv for his comments, and I will come back for the Q&A session after that. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We ended FI15 with revenues of 53,319 crores, a year-year growth of 6.4% in rupee terms. In dollar terms, we grew 5.6%. On a constant currency basis, based on FI14 average rate, we grew by 7.1%. If you recollect, we had given a guidance of 7 to 9% in April based on March 31, 2014 rates. We grew by 7.7% based on 31st March 2014 rates. However, our device guidance was 7 to 9 based on September 30th, and we have grown by 6.5% based on those exchange rates. We have delivered an ETS growth of 15.8% year, 6.4%. I believe we have done exceedingly well on the margin front in FI15. Operating margins for the year improved by 190 basis points on a reported basis and 240 basis points on constant currency basis. This is our price effective for September 2014, 25,000 promotions during the year. We increased the average variable payout for employees from 64% in FI14 to 86% in FI15. We also did mid-year wage hike for a significant number of our employees effective October 1. We also increased our investment in training and employee engagement during the year. All these helped us to bring down the annualized attrition from 23.4% in Q1 to 13.4% in Q4. We have been able to show a remarkable improvement in operating margins because of our focus on improving operational efficiencies. Our on-site effort mix came down from 30.6% in FI14 to 28.8%. Utilized went up from 76.4% to 81% in FI15. Pricing, though, has been under pressure and has declined by 2.8% year-on-year basis on reported basis and 1.4% on constant currency basis. So we have done well year-on-year uh, -year on operational parameters and on margins. Growth continues to be a challenge. Our Q4 revenues in USD declined by 2.6% quarter-on-quarter on reported basis and by 0.4% on constant currency basis. Pricing continues to be under pressure and has declined by 3.8% quarter-on-quarter on reported basis and by 1.7% on constant currency basis. Our inflation for the quarter declined by 410 basis points to 78.6%, excluding trainees, primarily due to lower volume growth. Our operating margin for the quarter was at 25.7%, a sequential decline of 100 basis points. We had a cost constant impact of 70 basis points on our Q4 margins. We added 14,471 employees growth during the quarter with an net addition of 6,549 employees. We have rolled out an average wage hike of 6.5% for our employees in India and 2% for our employees outside of India. Including promotions and other benefits, these increases will be an average of 7.5% to 8% for India and 2.5% for outside India. It is important to note that this is an addition to a media hike that we did for a significant number of people in October. We are committed to relook at our capital allocation and cash deployment policy in line with the company's strategy of new and renew, which we shall just articulated. We are planning a financial model for the next five years. MND is going to be an integral part of our strategy, and as such, we would like to allocate a significant part of our incremental cash flows to it. We also need to make significant investments in, in infrastructure and in technology assets. Therefore, we need to spend 50% of our incremental cash flows on MND and investments in infrastructure and technology assets. Keeping this in mind, we recommend it to the board an increase in dividend payout from current 40% of the post tax profit to 50%. This implies a final dividend of 29 rupees 50 pesa per share for fiscal 2015, equivalent to 14 rupees 75 pesa per share after one is to one bonus issue if approved by the shareholders. The board accepted the same subject to shareholder approval in the AGM. The increase in dividend payout from 40 to 50 percent of net profits will negatively impact our FI16 EPS by approximately 58 pesa due to lower non operating income. The board has also recommended a bonus issue of one equity share for every equity share held and a stock dividend of one American depository share for every ADS held, as on the record date to be determined. The global currencies have seen extreme volatility during FI15, especially in the last four to five months. Almost all global currencies except Indian rupees have depreciated against the U.S. dollar. Based on the average exchange rate realized in Q4 or Q3, Euro depreciated by 10.7% against the dollar, AUD depreciated by 8.5%. 
can see the volatility, we can we believe that our current hedging policy of taking short-term hedges is in line, and and we would we would wish to continue with that. We are outselling hedges of about a billion dollars as of the quarter end. Our yield for the quarter was at 9.04% as compared to 9.24 in Q3. Yields are likely to decline further due to expected softening of interest rates in India. Our, our effective tax rate for FI15 is at 28.6%. We expect it to be between 28 to 29% for FI16. We spent 66 crores in Q4 and 254 crores in FI15 towards CSR. Coming to dual segments, both North America and Europe grew by 7% constant currency in FI15. The rest of the world grew by 8 while India declined by 1%. Amongst verticals, energy, communication, and services grew by 10.5%. Manufacturing grew by 9.7%. Financial services and insurance grew by 6.1%. While retail consumer products grew by 3.3% in constant currency for FI15. Although Fenecon has declined 9% in constant currency terms for FI15, it had a nice growth in the last two quarters, a sequential constant currency growth of 4.9% in Q3 and 14.2% in Q4. BPO grew by 7.2% in FI15 on constant currency basis, but declined by 2.7% quarter and quarter in constant currency in Q4. Our cash and cash equivalents were at 32,585 crores as of March 31, 2015. Our cash and cash equivalents have declined in Q4 mainly on account of uh, we paid 1,376 crores towards acquisition of Panaya and acquiring a stake in Nova. A uh, payment of 3,446 crores towards taxes, including a demand for tax authority, uh, demand from tax authorities in India for assessment year 1011. The same has been paid, and we have filed an appeal with income tax appellate uh, tribunal. Capex of 65 crores and increase in uh, DSO by four days from 61 to 65 days. We are guiding for a 10 to 12 percent constant currency growth in dollar terms for FI16. Our FI16 growth it has been impacted by 380 basis points due to adverse cost currency movements. And therefore, on a reported basis, we are guiding for a revenue growth of 6.2% to 8.2%. The guidance in INR terms is 8.4% to 10.4% on a reported basis. We have done exceedingly well by substantially improving our operating margins for FI15, while we have continued to make necessary investments to accelerate growth. We had earlier provided an operating margin band of 25% plus minus 1% based on the currency rate at that time. However, as you know, during the last two quarters, most global currencies have repreciated significantly against the US dollar, and this has negatively impacted our operating margins by about 100 basis points. Despite that, we would like to retain the margin band that we had given earlier of 25% plus minus 1%. However, operating margins may be volatile quarter on quarter. As in every year, the first quarter will see an impact from increasing salaries, promotions, and investment in new visas. I expect the first quarter operating margins to be impacted by 250 basis points because of these reasons. With that, we'll uh, open the floor for questions. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are also requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Anyone who has a question may press star and one. Our first question is from Edward Queso of Wells Fargo. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon. I was curious what you can offer on, on pricing um, both in the quarter or realization in the quarter as, as far as your view, and if you could split it between sort of new technology efforts and uh, the existing run the business uh, offerings. Thank you. So, hey, Edward, um, on the new, the growth has been dramatic, but it is still very, very small uh, and it's very early. So the project that I talked about, uh, is a sum total of about a total of 250 projects. If you look at design thinking, uh, the IIP, IAP work, and, and AI. Uh, on these projects, there is no pricing pressure. These are high margin, high value projects. Uh, however, these are 250 projects compared to um, more than 8,000 master projects that have more than 40,000 per project. So this is a very different kind of a scale. So it will take several more quarters for the new effort to become a meaningful part of the revenue. I would expect that uh, at least uh, the next two to three quarters, uh, we will not see a substantial effect from the new projects in the revenue. 
on the traditional projects, that is why we have started our efforts in renewing those using automation, using new technologies, uh, as well as bringing more efficiency into that, as I mentioned, with the five-point innovation that we are bringing to every single project. And uh, in the traditional business, we do see pricing pressure, and we expect this, and we are prepared for this. For us, Provin, you can talk more about this. Yeah. Uh, for quarter four, we had a pricing uh, dip of 3.8% uh, on a reported basis and 1.7% uh, on a constant currency. And for the year... Uh, we had 2.8% decline on year-on-year -year basis and 1.4% uh, on constant currency basis. And uh, that, in a sense, as Vishal said, is a reflection of what we are seeing. Uh, about 62% uh, of our business still comes from the business and IT operation space. Uh, that space is heavily commoditized. Uh, uh, and to win deals, we have to go very aggressive on pricing. And over a period of time, we are investing heavily in, uh, in, uh, in automation, artificial intelligence, productivity improvement, and so on. So we are confident over a period of time we will be able to go aggressive in deals at the same time uh, manage the pricing, but in the short term we will continue to see challenges. Um, my other question is on um, uh, uh, congratulations on getting the employee turnover down. Now the, the six and a half percent average wage uh, increase appears to be below the level of some of your major peers. Is that um, any sense on your employee reaction to that, and you know, um, it, could you have to make mid-course corrections during the year? Thank you. Uh, Ed, this is Rajiv here. Uh, see, you have to see it in the perspective that we also gave a media wage hike to about 20,000 of our employees in October. Uh, the numbers that we have to roll out of 6.5% excludes the benefits and promotions including which it will be somewhere between 75 to 8%. And if you, uh, if you add the mid-year hike that we gave, it's in line with the industry. So I think if you look at the major competition, has also rolled out hikes in the same uh, range. So I think we are, we are comfortable with the kind of hikes we rolled out. And, uh, you know, during that year, if we, if we see uh, opportunities to increase further, we would do so. And beyond that, um, we are transforming ourselves towards a much more of a performance-driven culture. All right, that was Infosys. Clearly, the, the, the stock is now down about 5% at the low point of the day.